can we compute e to the power a, where a is a matrix? Why would we want to do that in the first place? Let us start with the second question. When you have a differential equation of the form x prime equals a times x, where a is a function of t and where a is a scalar, then we know that we have solutions of the form e to the power a t. If you want to study differential equations of the form x prime equals a times x, where x is a vector and a is a matrix, then we want to do something similar. So we come back to the first question, can we do this? Let us see in this video. How do we want to compute e to the power a? Well, if you have an x a number in R, we know how to compute e to the power x. We can do that using a power series. e to the power x equals sum n from 0 to infinity, x to the power n over n factorial, the Taylor series of the exponent. Let us define something similar in case we have e to the power a where a is a matrix. So we say e to the power a equals sum n from 0 to infinity, a to the power n over n factorial. And if you write down the first few terms of the Taylor series, then we see what we mean. You have a to the power 0 over 0 factorial, a to the power 1 over 1 factorial, a squared over 2 factorial, and so on and so on. So if we write them out, we get something like i plus a over 1 plus 1 half a squared, etc., etc. So in order to compute exponent a, we only need to be able to compute powers of a. And we are able to do so. So in this way we can compute exponent of a. Let us look at some examples. Is it hard to compute e to the power a? Let us start with an easy a. Suppose we have a diagonal matrix, so a equals d equals lambda 1, 0, 0, lambda 2. So what happens in that case? e to the power a equals e to the power d, sum m from 0 to infinity, d to the power n over n factorial. However, we know how to compute d to the power n. d to the power n is, the, is a d matrix again with elements of the diagonal lambda 1 to the power n, lambda 2 to the power n due to the special, specific form of d. So we have d to the power n over here and the summation outside. Now we know that we can take the summation inside because adding matrices is the same as adding all the elements of the matrices. So we can put the summation inside here and there, over here. And then we recognize something over here. This term here is just a Taylor series of e to the power lambda 1. And this term over here is just a Taylor series of e to the power lambda 2. And we don't have problems with the zeros, of course. So we find, finally, e to the power lambda 1, 0, 0, e to the power lambda 2. So if a matrix A equals a D matrix, the exponent of A is just, it's very easy to compute that one. What happens if A is not equal to a matrix D, but if A is similar to a matrix D? Second example, suppose A equals P times D times P inverse. So let's first remember how to compute e A to the power N in that case. So if you have A cubed, for example, we have A times A times A. But then we see that the P inverse P, P inverse P, that those are cancelling out. So what we are left is a P, D, D and a D, so D cubed and be inverse. So that's the formula for a cubed, or more general for a to the power n. Works the same. All the p times p inverse in between are cancelling out, and we are only left with the first p, all the d's in the middle, and the final p inverse. So that's how we compute a to the power n. And we can use this result to compute e to the power a. If we want to compute the exponent of a, we have sum n from 0 to infinity, a to the power n over n factorial. 
But now A equals PDP inverse, so we have a PDP inverse over here. We know how to compute PDP inverse to the power n. That simplifies to P d to the power n P inverse. And then factorial just stays there. And then the P and the P inverse, they don't have anything to do with the summation. They're not depending on n, which means that we can take the P and the P inverse out of the summation on the correct side, of course, they do not necessarily commute. So we have to can take the P and the P inverse outside. And then inside, I recognize something. It's the same as what we computed over here. So we know the result. We get a P, the same result as we had over here. E to the power lambda 1, 0, 0. E to the power lambda 2, and a P inverse. So if A is either a D matrix or if A is similar to a D matrix, then it's not so hard to compute the exponent of A as we see in all these examples.